Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this new incredible discovery from the old data of Kepler telescope. And it does suggest that there is actually a really interesting planet somewhere out there. Possibly even the most Earth-like planet we've discovered so far. And this one is completely by accident. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> We are currently at a distance of about 300 light years away from planet Earth. It is kind of far. This system is known as Kepler-1649. And for the most part, this was actually not a particularly interesting system. We did discover a planet here back in 2017. And this planet, simulated here by NASA, was basically what's known as a super-Earth. Here's a slightly more accurate representation. It's a little bit bigger and a little bit more massive than Earth. It also is a little bit closer to the parent star, which of course suggests that it's probably much hotter here and very likely is not particularly habitable in terms of the actual conditions. And for the most part, this planetary system was, I guess, in some sense ignored by the media and by the news for the past three years. There is, however, something else that recently happened. So first of all, how do we even find these planets? Well, first of all, it all started with Kepler telescope that was looking at all of these thousands and thousands of stars and looking at their brightness. When something passed in front of the star, their brightness would decrease, and if this uh, brightness was decreasing periodically, it sort of implied that there was probably a planet or something else happening there. Today, all of this data is publicly available and you can actually go and try to find these planets yourself by using one of the links in the description below. And for example, for this particular planet, this is what we've discovered back in 2017. Here is one of these observations from the Kepler telescope, and what you're looking at here is essentially approximately a thousand days of looking at the star and seeing its brightness. We can actually try to zoom in here and see what all of this looks like in a little bit more detail, but as you can see, without a thorough statistical analysis, it's kind of difficult to actually see what's really happening here. We can even try to create um, a kind of an analysis of periodicity or try to see if there's any repetitive pattern here, which will create this really interesting graph that shows us the chances for various repetitive events here. But even with this, it's still difficult to find the planet without a thorough analysis. Because all of this is so complex and requires a lot of manual processing, a lot of th this work was actually done by a really cool program NASA created known as NASA RoboVetter. Basically, it's an automatic search that goes through various patterns automatically and then identifies them as possible planets out there. This is actually absolutely free and you can even use this by yourself. Um, the link for this is also in the description somewhere. Although it does require some tinkering with certain applications and you do need to install this manually. But in a nutshell, when the RoboVetter looked at this, it identified two different objects. One was the confirmed planet known as Kepler-1639b and one was the so-called false positive. Basically, this is in statistics, when we kind of look at something and we think there might be something there, but it could be a mistake. And so for the longest time, for three years now, we've always believed this was a mistake. But there was a team of scientists that was actually looking at all of these false positives and decided to actually try to investigate them in more detail. Because sometimes these false positives turn out to be actual objects. And as you can probably imagine, to their surprise, they discovered that Kepler-1649c was not a false positive, and was most likely the most Earth-like planet we've actually discovered so far, both in terms of the size, mass, and also the location around the star system, even beating the previous record holder, Kepler-22, and a lot of other Earth-like planets we've uh, identified and confirmed. There are actually other planets we haven't confirmed yet, and some of them we might confirm in the future, and they are a little bit more Earth-like. But for now, the most confirmed planet that is also most Earth-like is definitely the planet in this particular star system. Now, what exactly is this planet and why is it so exciting? Well, obviously, the first reason is because it's very similar in size to Earth, only about 6% larger than Earth. And it's also in the habitable zone where it receives approximately 75% of starlight compared to our own Earth. So it might be a little bit cooler, but not by much. Unfortunately, however, this system has a red dwarf, which basically means that maybe this star system is going to be filled with all kinds of really dangerous flares, similar to Proxima Centauri. But in the past three years, the scientists have not identified any dangerous flares coming from the system. So it could be also a very calm red dwarf. 
Now, at the same time, we know that for the most part, the red dwarf systems have tidally locked planets. If this is the case, then basically these planets are probably going to be the so-called eyeball planets, with the most likely appearance for this particular planet being something like this, assuming of course it has water on the surface. Basically one side here, the one facing the star, is going to be always kind of a little bit hotter, then there's going to be an area right here with the somewhat in-between conditions and possibly very livable, very habitable conditions, and then we have the dark side that's most likely really cold. But the other interesting thing about this particular discovery, or this particular star system, is the relationship between the newly discovered planet, the planet known as 1649c, and the old planet known as 1649b. If we were to actually take a look at how they orbit in relation to each other, there's a very unusual pattern. The pattern known as resonance, and this orbital resonance is actually has never been seen before. Now, it's basically a resonance of 9 to 4, which means that for every 9 orbits of the closer planet, the farther planet makes 4 orbits. And the thing is, scientists believe that it's quite possible for them to actually have this resonance, but because we've never seen it before and we've seen something else, the new implication here is that there is something else between them. Because if we were to place another planet right between them, each of these planets would now have a 3-2 orbital resonance. Basically, for every 2 orbits of the inner planet, the outer one gets 3 orbits. And this resonance is extremely common. We've seen it many different times in various star systems. So, this is why scientists behind this particular discovery are now thinking that maybe there is another planet in the middle. Right now it's just a hunch based on observation from other star systems, but it's a pretty solid hunch and might even lead to a discovery of another planet in this particular star system. But the biggest discovery here is of course that we found yet another Earth-like planet or very similar to Earth planet around a red dwarf. Which is of course a very important confirmation in our search for the next terrestrial planet, or possibly the so-called Earth 2.0. It does seem like red dwarfs almost always have these types of planets, and it's also very likely that at least one of these red dwarfs, which of course is the most common type of a star in the galaxy, might be of course the type of a star we need to be looking at if we want to discover new Earth. And although obviously some red dwarfs are very active and produce a lot of radiation, not all of them are like that. Some might end up being perfect for new terrestrial planets and new habitable worlds. And for all we know, maybe Kepler-1649c is that particular planet. Although at the current distance of 300 light years away from us, I don't think we're going to be getting there anytime soon. Nevertheless, the search continues, and until we discover another exciting planet, that's kind of it. Check out some of the other videos I made about this topic, and also subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. You can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below that I'm also wearing right now myself. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye.